Uh, this is, um, um, in some sense, it's a second part to a question you have seen in part one of this set. Um, in part one, there was a question where we were using Doppler effect seen from Earth's orbit uh, to calculate Earth's orbital velocity. So that's one way to do the calculation. Um, now, in that calculation, you use this relationship. And the thing there is, it's, a, um, it's an approximate relationship. And it's an approximation that was good for the situation you have seen before, but it's an approximation that is not good for uh, the context of, I think, chapter 27, uh, quasars. Quasars are so far away. They are moving so fast, according to Hubble's law, that they are moving at a speed that's quite comparable to speed of light. So if you continue to use this approximate formula, then um, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, um, so you need to use this uh, exact relationship, which is a bit of a beast of a formula. <laughs> so, um, so we'll work through that. And so for this calculation, I think at this point is where I would actually stop recommending that you use a cal scientific calculator like this, or more precisely, I guess you can, but um, you do have to be super careful. Uh, so let, let me keep using this, except uh, let me just have a second calculator ready so that I can do what I, uh, well, I can practice what I preach. Um, so, so yeah, so, um, <laughs> um, yeah. So, so in the notes here, it'll kind of tell you these um, um, things that you should watch out for. Um, so um, it, one, just reading the question, you know, red is shift of some number. It's just giving you the G directly instead of uh, making you go through the wavelength numbers and calculate this. So we are just giving it to you because we have more complicated calculation to complete. And um, so for the first part of the question, we'll have all the information necessary to simply plug in numbers here but simply plugging in numbers will still take a number of steps. And so, um, so we'll work through that carefully. So first part, it's a saying um, the, you, you found a quasar that has a red shift of 0 0.6. And what that means is that the G value that you compute from measuring the spectrum, it'll, it works out to be 0 0.6. Someone has done that analysis work for you already. And our job now is to calculate its speed using this exact formula. And because it's a complicated fraction, I'm not going to trust myself to enter this all correctly in one shot. I'm just gonna go through calculation one part at a time. Numerator first, and then I'll do denominator separately, and then I'll take the ratio. So the numerator first. Um, I am going to use the parenthesis tool in my calculator. Um, if I didn't have parenthesis tool, then this is what I would do actually. I would do uh, what's inside the parenthesis first, g plus one. So 0 0.6 plus one, get an equal sign. So 1.6, yeah, that's 0 0.6 plus one. Square that, um, okay and then subtract one, so minus one, and then hit equal sign. Make sure that that makes a sense, 1.56, makes sense as square of 1.6 minus one. Okay, so I'm gonna save that on that calculator. And let me do the denominator calculation uh, using the parenthesis here. So open parenthesis and then G plus one, 0 0.6 plus one, close parenthesis, and then square, and then add one, plus one equals. Um, make, make sure you know how your own calculator works. Um, this, by the way, is an excellent question to do on Wolfram Alpha because Wolfram Alpha tells you how it interpreted your entry. Let me, I will show you after this one. Um, okay, so we have this, that's the numerator, 1.56, and we need to divide it by 3.56. So I'm gonna take this number 
divided by 3.56. And this ratio um, or the fraction 0 0.438, that is the speed of quasar divided by speed of light. So this already gives it to you in the fraction of speed of light. So it'll be 0 0.438 times the speed of light. So yeah, that's it. Um, and yeah, there's a whole follow-up thing. Let me show you um, if you do this calculation in Wolfram Alpha, what that looks like, just so that you can um, see what to watch out for. So, um, so imagine I'm doing this on Wolfram Alpha and I'm doing it wrong. I might do it this way, 0 0.6 plus one squared minus one divided by 0 0.6 plus one squared plus one. I've done this wrong. And the, one of the reasons I would recommend Wolfram Alpha is that when you do it wrong, you can see it, that it's being interpreted wrong by Wolfram Alpha. It tells you, uh, oh yeah, one divide, that, that's not what I meant. I meant to take this whole thing and then divide it. So I need more parentheses here. And I need more parentheses here to make sure the whole thing, um, oops, did it just copy? Let me enter. So you can see how Wolfram Alpha interpreted your input and make sure that, yeah, that's what I meant to say. Um, so that's what I would recommend in the calculator, something, a complicated expression like this. Um, I mean, I wouldn't discourage you from doing calculation exercise, but just watch out for potential mistakes that can be made very easily. Um, okay, let's keep going here. Um, so for the second part of oh, yeah, thing, let's try this one more time. Oh, let me copy over that formula so that I have it available as I'm doing later parts. Um, so the formula that I'm working with, is uh, t plus one squared minus one divided by t plus one squared plus one. Okay. Um, okay, uh, so we are going through the same step again. We're just using this different number. I'll, um, you know what, let me just do this on all from alpha. It's quicker, I'm running out of time. Let me just um, do it a quick way. Um, and it's quicker and also in many ways better because, you know, again, if we make a mistake like what I'm about to now, three plus one squared minus one divided by three plus one squared plus one. I keep telling that that's not correct because you can see here how Wolfram Alpha understood that input. It put the ratio in the wrong place. I need to, Make sure that all, all these things are grouped. And another advantage of Wolfram Alpha is that you can correct your mistakes. In a lot of uh, calculators, you can't really correct the mistake. You just have to restart from scratch. So with the mistake corrected, that's the correct um, input. Now I can exactly enter 15 over 17. The system won't accept that because um, it has to be a decimal or so. Let me see if Wolfram Alpha gave me a decimal. Uh, there it is, 0 0.882, 0 0.882. And uh, do watch out for this. I do want an answer that's accurate up to thousandth digit, a uh, third digit here. A lot of other calculation questions, 5% tolerance works, but not for this one, because as you get to higher and higher redshift, the number's gonna approach one and at some point, um, there's a big difference between 95% uh, of speed of light and 99% of speed of light. But with the 5% tolerance, they appear the same and they shouldn't really be. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of what it's saying here. Um, okay, uh, the third part. So this is the super complicated part. Um, it's uh, asking you to reverse the relationship here. Instead of giving us the G and asking for V over C, it's uh, giving us V over C and then asking for G. And I will tell you the algebra here, it's not easy or yeah, it's not easy. So I have done it for you. It is in the hint. And if you want to follow it step-by-step, step, you can, I do encourage it. 
but if at some point your eyes if your eyes glaze over then um really what you need is this so so that is there and uh, you're welcome to use it the point of this class is uh, make you do a bunch of algebra it's really the conceptual descriptive part it's just that here um, there is uh, no way to get to this conceptual descriptive part without also going through some quite a bit of math so um so i've done the algebra for you you can copy it i will not make you do this algebra in any other thing, uh, if somehow you need this formula, I will give it to you. So, um, so yeah, you can do that. Uh, let me close that hint so I can actually see the question. So, okay, quasars moving away from us at this speed. What is the measured redshift? Uh, let me continue to do this in all from alpha. No reason to uh, struggle through with a calculator. So this is how you enter this in from alpha. Square root, you have to spell it out like a square root. That's how you spell out square root. And let me do this incorrectly again. One plus 0 0.6 divided by one minus 0 0.6 minus one. And you will see that um, from alpha tells you, uh, yeah, so this is what tells you, oh, that, that's not right, I didn't mean that and correct it, uh, include enough parentheses so that the operation on, is done in correct order. Um, okay, wait, did I do this? Well, we'll see. Oh, oh I, I guess that is one, <laughs> I'm sorry. The answer of a one was confusing, but I'm pretty sure if you, um, it's not always gonna be one. Uh, it, it, this is one only when this is 0 0.6. Um, it's not gonna be one when it's not 0 0.6. It's randomly generated. This one particular number happens to give me this number for redshift of the quasar. But um, yeah, different to generate numbers will have a different answer here. And uh, yeah, I guess I just do it once. All right, let me just move on here. Um, let me wrap this up quickly. So here, um, so in the hint, I highlighted, um, I guess I would do advice the same thing that you should do, have been doing, which is um, working through step-by-step -step carefully. So here I would do um, advice working out what delta lambda is at first. Um, you can do that by, um, so, you know, given this relationship, it tells you that delta lambda is this number times the wavelength lambda. You are given the wavelength lambda. So the change in wavelength is gonna be four times that. Let me, oh, I can do that in a calculator. Four times 97.3. 389.2. Now, uh, that's not going to be the actual answer. That's the uh, that's the difference in wavelength. That's how much the wavelength has shifted. Uh, it shifted from this number. So to actually get the new wavelength that you are detecting, you have to take this change and add it to the original value. So that will be 97.3 plus. 389.2 nanometers. So um, I'm gonna take this already in my calculator and add uh, 97.3. So 486.5, 486.5. So that's it. Uh, there are a couple follow-up questions. I think I can leave that for you. Um, it's uh, just making sure that you understand what um, this wavelength means. Um, and oh, and that's it. You know, let me answer that so that I can uh, open up the part six, which is not a un question, but um, it's just a final follow-up or uh, feedback. Yeah, this can be measured well from ground through the atmosphere. So, um, so the Lyman series of lines are originally no ultraviolet. You can't really observe it well from ground, but if it's coming from quasar, at it's an extreme redshift to the value. You can actually see it as part of your visible light spectroscopy.